Welcome to the Off the Record podcast with Nick Thielen. We are at the Velvet Olive Lounge today in Red Deer, Alberta. So how are you doing? I'm great, Nick. Thanks for having me here. It's really, really cool. The reason I'm so um, excited to talk to you today, you know, um, is because um, when I when I listen to your music, um, I really get the sense that you're very much a, a storytelling singer songwriter. You know, for me, I've been told that I'm still fairly young and. Uh, <laughs> And That's a good coming into my thirties <laughs> here soon, and and you, I can just tell you know, um, you know, uh, talking about your your record, uh, take my heart, you know, which you released um, in twenty twenty. So yeah. I can just tell that you know it, it seems like you've been playing music for a while, but you found a way to to uh, share your stories and your life experiences through the songs, and in a way, it's like for me, I'm like learning and it's one of those things where you know I have good days and bad days but it's like being able to take those experiences and kind of put them in a time capsule and make them into a song with some of your some of your music that's what I'm really uh, inspired by yeah it's been a, an interesting journey for me too because it's not something that's been a part of my life songwriting is is really quite new mm. to me and um, <clears throat> I think I think the shutdowns in COVID had a lot to do with that and, and the heightened emotions that I was feeling about everything. And it just seemed to bring everything to the forefront. And because I was no longer working mm -hmm. and I was in a new relationship, which was beautiful and joyous and still is, um, um, my mind was free of all the trappings that had been there for so long, you know, mm -hmm. as a businessman and you know, trying to make a living and trying to make your a way through this world, which mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, challenging for all of us. But um, I think I, I, I encountered a level of freedom in my mind that I had never really had before. And some of it had to do with being free from uh, addiction issues that have followed me my whole life too. And not free from them, but um, they're now being managed in a way where um, mm -hmm. they no longer... Um, consume and take over and, 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 and influence, you know, mm -hmm. the, my mind the way that they used to. So I think that freedom had a lot to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. The um, music's always been there though. You know, when I was a kid, I, my mom used to pull me out and have me sing born free in front of the, in front of her friends and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, at least in, she did until it was my idea. I remember once asking her, Hey, do you want me to do that again? She was like, no, I think maybe that was my first experience of being shut down on the stage. I don't know. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, how does it feel as well? Like I know you talk, you talk a little bit about um, you know being young and first you know um, playing music or performing in front of people, let's say. But um, now now you're uh, playing all over the place, and you're actually playing. At, you played a concert here at the Velvet Olive with your with your daughter. Yeah. How about um, that? Eh? Yeah. What does it feel like for you to be able to to share those experiences on stage with her? It was an amazing thing, and. Um, I've been sharing uh, experiences with, with Elise, my oldest daughter. I have two. My youngest one is Ava, and she's not a musician. Mm -hmm. But uh, Elise has been inspiring me musically and in terms of writing and her painting uh, for a long time, since I can remember. And mm -hmm. um, I got to watch her when she just turned 18. Uh, she had a show at the original Velvet Olive here mm -hmm. with her art and her music all by herself. So I got to do that. And then a couple of years ago, Kyle... Uh, after he bought the olive, mm -hmm. shortly after he got it, he uh, gave me the opportunity to have my own show, mm -hmm. uh, which featured my art. Um, that that also came later in my life, my painting and and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then just recently, this past uh, early January, my daughter Elise and I had a, a combined show with our art oh, and, wow. and our original songs. And um, it was a full house. It was the best crowd ever, you mm -hmm. know, just... And she stole the show. It was just, it was a brilliant, brilliant moment for a dad to be a part of. I can tell you it was, Yeah. I'll never forget it. And we're, we're looking to do more. We want to do more. Yeah. Well, and that's a big part of this project for me is being able to, 
you know, uh, one, one thing in particular I've been asking every artist is we talk a lot about the, for every, uh, you know, we fans of the music, you know, they talk about um, what it means to them to be able to come out and see a concert and th what the words mean to the people listening to the songs. But for yourself as a musician, going through all these challenges and maybe not necessarily being able to get on the stage as often, like, is there a, is there a different feeling now that you have, like that we've, we've gone through these things and uh, does it does it feel different performing on stage or is it just kind of like what it's all like how it's always been for you um i think because i'm so new to it um you know i never i never took a stage until i was uh, approached by my nephew uh, who was a, a great player mm -hmm. and he said uncle mike you, you you need some guitar therapy so he invited me out and we played for a while and he had a studio at, at his place and he invited me to become part of a duo with him which um, if if uh, if anybody got to know my nephew Justin Rendell and his abilities as a musician, being asked by him to be in a duo with him, mm -hmm. there isn't a musician in in this country that wouldn't want to play with him. He's that good. So it was a real gift that he gave me, and and he saw that I had the desire and the passion for it, mm -hmm. but no direction with it whatsoever. And and I think that's what he really tried to do for his old uncle and, and he he did so i my experience is really only a, a very s small window of my lifetime i'm 63 now and you know i'm just getting into my fifth year as a performer mm -hmm. and, and uh it's all come fast and furious and it's been overwhelming at times mm -hmm. but it's always felt like exactly what i'm supposed to be doing finally yeah i, I finally know what I'm supposed to be doing after a lifetime of doing Kay. what I had to do, I guess. Well, uh, Mike, would you might mind to play some songs for us? I'd be really, really thrilled to do that. Yeah. Okay. I've got a couple in mind. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I think the first one here is uh, called "The Song for Everyone." Yeah. And uh, you know, you want to tell me a little bit about writing that song and what it's like? Yeah, it was um, the third song I wrote, and. Uh, I was just sitting on, on, on my couch on a cold February afternoon watching some news from somewhere. Couldn't even tell you where. And I don't even know what they were talking about, but it was all horrible. Mm -hmm. And it was humans hurting humans everywhere around the world. And I just thought, man, if, if I could just write a song for everyone. And I did. And that's the night I even called it that, a song for everyone, because that was really the true feelings of it. So Yeah, and I think whatever you're going through, um, you know, watching this or listening to it you know i think uh this this song is a great way to connect and uh hopefully you enjoy this song and um it encourages you to check out more of mike's music thanks this is a song called uh a song for everyone i think it's maybe the second or third song i wrote and i was watching tv one one afternoon and the news was horrible and i thought man if i could just write a song for everyone and that's where this came from Live your 
your dreams And may you be free And may you have friends that will help you back up When you're down on your knees And may you be strong Someone to help you along You might think there's only so much That anyone can do But if we try a little more To play a part We might wake one day and find a world where we all get along And I wish this from the bottom of my heart Of my heart So long may you live Long may you run Long may you fly Under the sun That was A Song for Everyone by Mike Zabo. And I hope you connected to that song as much as I did. Um, and hopefully share it with your family and friends. Um, yeah, I have. it was the first single I ever released. Mm -hmm. And so it's on all the streaming platforms. As a single, it's also part of the album, and I do have a YouTube video as well. Fantastic. That one too. So, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That album, Take My Heart, oh, that is fantastic, and you should all check that out. It's Thank amazing. You. Thank you. And I'm getting it put on vinyl too, but it won't be out until September. <laughs> fantastic. Apparently, there's a vinyl shortage. Yeah. Well, go figure, hey? So, I know, like, as a stand up comedian, what performing does for me and kind of the energy and what it gives back to me but um you talked a little bit about the struggles and challenges and things you went through mm -hmm. um so what part of you know like what aspect of picking up a guitar like how was that therapeutic and how did it help you through what what you're facing when I when I came here, you mentioned a song that you had heard on my album. It's called Already Gone. That was the second song I wrote. And that was basically my expression of lament over my breakup with my wife. We were together 28 years, our two beautiful daughters. Lots of great things happened, but it ended. And um, that song, writing that song, um, felt... Cathartic. I've, I've heard other artists say that, you know, sometimes the songwriting process is a cathartic one. It helps you release yeah. pent up feelings and emotions and anger or frustration or envy or whatever. Mm. And that particular song, when I put the pen down, um, it was palpable. I could feel it in my chest. Mm. It was like, <sighs> And it was, a, and I and I wrote once that it felt like I'd been holding my breath forever, and I finally got to let it out. So. I think maybe a little bit like that. Oh. When, when you perform a song like that, does it, does it, does those emotions come out again? Yeah. Is it a little release of those every time you play it a does. song? Yeah, it does. And I sing a lot of songs that have a lot of uh, tough topics, you know, depression. I have mm -hmm. a song about fetal alcohol syndrome. I have songs about addiction that are very close to my heart and, and my experience. And those of many of the people in my life that are that are still suffering and dealing with that, that yeah. stuff, you know? I mean, I think there's lots of songs we could talk about too, but one of the things I, one of the songs I think about now too, like Thank You um, mm -hmm. off the album, just made me think about like, you know, because I've been going through a lot of stuff and uh, um, just to be thankful for what you have and what you're going through. Like, I don't know, for me personally, like with my challenges that I go through with a disability, you know, every day I have to be thankful because I don't know what tomorrow is going to be like, you know, um, with 
challenge, you know, physical challenges or how my body's going to feel. So just, uh, just being thankful for, for the day mm -hmm. and just like, um, appreciating, uh, what it, what, what you have. Um, so that's why I connected a lot with your music. Um, and, um, one of the, I remember the first time I saw you perform, I think it was probably at the hub, which is a, a place here in, in Red Deer that, uh, uh, helped a lot of people with disabilities and uh, <clears throat> had activities for them and things like that. And um, so, what is um, doing a show like that and being able to like give back, uh, give back in a way, um, mm -hmm. you know, like to be able to connect with that population of people and um, wh why why is it important to to you know to share your your talent and your ability with with those people. Because I think those people are every bit as much my audience as any other people on this planet. I, I, I see people as people. It ta it's taken a long time to see be, be there like mm -hmm. that. Uh, and my daughter Ava, my youngest daughter, uh, deals with with uh, mental health challenges and and global developmental delays, and uh, she has several diagnoses, and mm -hmm. including things like anxiety and panic and depression and things that are very, very prevalent, you know, so leading up to having my daughter, I was oblivious to all of it because I've been blessed in my life with good health, with, uh, with everything. I, my life has been a blessing. It just really has. So uh, earlier on with my daughter, it was a real struggle, even just coming to terms that she had some differences mm -hmm. that I needed to be aware of in order to so she taught me a lot and, and, and having a daughter who I saw struggle with society, with um, bullying, with just human ignorance, really, mm -hmm. is what it boiled down to. Really, um, I think made me uh, more receptive to the fact that, um, <laughs> that they're just people trying to live their lives, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, no more or less worthy of it than me, you know, um, just because we're different. So that's, I think, part of it. As far as how the music connects, um, yeah, when, when a song really hits with somebody and I know it, um, and it's usually because they tell me and I can see it or they're crying or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I've had men in the audience crying, come up to me shaking and just yeah. like the song has just really come, come and hit them. I think it's because the songs that come out of me come out of all my life experiences surrounding all these people. And I think I've just been very, very observant. Yeah. And I, I don't know. That's one of the things I feel. There's a lot of like soul and emotion in, in the, I feel like, maybe this is more of a joke, but I feel like, you could sing the ABCs and it would be like really calming, you know, oh, I mean, nice. it, would, it would just be like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I feel like you could sing a, you know, or a, or a TV jingle or something and it would still be, you know, give me that kind of feeling. You mentioned why you wrote that about, um, you know, seeing stuff on the news and, and wanting to write something for everybody to connect to and, and, you know, recently seeing everything that's happening on the news, there's a lot of hard hitting scary stuff i feel like and it's yeah so it was really really getting to me and so yeah um i can definitely relate to that and so it's nice to have a in a way like another outlet to be able to uh you know to be able to uh get away from that if that makes sense to to uh you have those scary things but then there's a way to like process it or to go through it by just like turning on music or um i noticed they really in that particular case they tried to follow it up with a very very positive story after trying to kind of scare people i feel like um but anyway it was it was uh so i can definitely relate to that um that experience of just wanting to write something and for everybody to connect yeah. to um but and i don't know if there's like a secret sauce or anything but is there a particular songwriting process you have like do you kind of like sit down write some lyrics and then let it kind of i don't know marinate and figure out if that's the right way to say your your message or well my i 
Um, my first start songwriting, uh, I didn't even know I was writing a song. My daughter Ava was in big trouble, and I thought I was going to lose her. And uh, and I felt that if I was going to lose her, I was going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. And so I was in the garage one night, and there was a pen and paper, and I just started writing mm -hmm. what was coming out. And that was Thank You. And that was the first song I ever wrote. And that actually is a song for my ex-wife, mm -hmm. the mother of my daughters. And I just played it the other night at the 111 um, Grill. Mm -hmm. um, and I was proud to play, play it because, uh, you know, our, our history together is, is still very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't finish it that night. And um, I never did finish it until after my divorce, after my separation. Mm -hmm. And um, I got into, um, Justin got a hold of me and I had started to go out to the open mics and things like that. And I met a fella here in town that heard me play the little bit of the song that I had and he came up to me afterwards and he said, that's a good song, you need to finish it. Here's what you need to do. Here's what I see. And I went, yeah, I think you're right. And then the song came. Mm -hmm. and then another one and another one and then nothing for another year or so and then uh, in 2020 I wrote FASD which was my fourth song mm -hmm. and it was the beginning of my new process it was a song where I had an idea in my head it was going to be a love song it was going to be this I grabbed my guitar a pen and paper I sat down and there was nothing like it was just a blank nothing mm -hmm. and so I put the guitar down I picked out the pen and I wrote the first line. And the first line was, he sang a song about a boy he said he'd like to kill. And I'd never written anything like that before. I was like, I don't write that kind of stuff. So I really didn't know what to make of it. And I looked at it for a second and I just went, oh. And then I picked it up and the rest of the song was down in about, not, not very long. Mm. You know, um, and then I had the problem of, I had all these words in the story, but I had no music. And I thought, well, how do you put music to a song about fetal alcohol syndrome? This isn't going to go anywhere. And I went and I asked a good friend of mine, Curtis um, uh, Pegu, who, who's an amazing singer songwriter from Red Deer. And we sat together and we, we worked it out and I got home and I played what we had come up with. And I went, nope, that sounds like Curtis's song because he has a very distinctive style. Mm -hmm. And then right away, this other thing came. I thought, okay, it has to be this and then boom. And then after that, the song started to really come and then COVID hit shortly after that in March mm. and I was home mm. and one after the other and it was all the stories and it was all the stories and it was all the stories and then the music would come and that is typically how I write. Mm. Every once in a while I'll have a, a, a musical lick come across and, and something will come from that but usually I have a story in my head. I've got five I wrote this weekend, honest to God. Mm. about all kinds of different things and they don't have music to them and, I, and I've got lots that I've written that don't have music I don't know if I'll ever find the music for them. But. Mm. This next song is called uh, Alberta Sky yes and um, was there a particular process for that one were you doing some traveling and seeing you know was that part of what happened with the writing that song or well how did that come about? It. Um, it's something that I've always connected to. I've been in Alberta my whole life. I grew, mm -hmm. I grew up in Calgary, moved to Banff, and then to Red Deer, and then. But um, in two, late two, late 1999, I moved to New Brunswick, which is a beautiful place. It really is. Um, mm -hmm. And I wasn't there very long. And one of the things I missed the most was the sky, because mm -hmm. yeah, in, uh, in New Brunswick's more bush country, and you just see little pieces of it. You just didn't see that big panoramic you know, wall to wall sky like you do here. And um, I just had it in my head that I wanted to write a song about it. That kind of, that was one of the more intentional songs I wrote. Yeah. And, um, and although it, it, it flowed very easily onto the paper, I, you know, it, it, the idea of it had been there for a long time. The song is called Alberta Sky. I only ever moved away from Alberta once and I missed that big old Alberta sky. So that's what this song's about. Prairie sky stopped me today the way it does and will again. A patchwork quilt to sweet pastels, my comforter, a dear old friend. It wrapped me in familiar winds, I watched a golden 
eagle fly A moment with my favorite friends The Rocky Mountains touch the sky Combines in the farmlands The cattle in the fields Farmers market shops And fairs with swings and ferris wheels Glaciers feed the rivers and the lakes The rest on high Reflections in the water of the big Alberta sky. A sunny day and I can see the bluest sky surrounding me. A winter wonderland delight where sunlight dances in the white. And as the seasons come and go, whatever comes I'll always know. My heart and spirit lie beneath the big Alberta sky. The road in southern ranchlands and the country we call peace. The badlands where the dinos hide, the prairies and the trees. And in the west, the Chinook winds her breath so warm and dry. Her archer eagle crown across the big. Albert Sky. The forest where the wild things roam, this native land we all call home. Buried deep beneath our soil, the precious metals, ore, and oil. And rising from this fertile land, the foothills lift their burden hands to the Rocky Mountain high in the big Alberta sky. Rockies took my breath again the way they do when I'm with them. And in the valleys far below, the mighty rivers start to flow. And there for all the world to see a watercolor tapestry, the greatest gift to you and I, that beautiful Alberta sky. Sat and watched the setting sun let day turn into night. I saw the Milky Way come on, was awed by ancient light. Aurora Borealis, the waves that seem to fly. The universal colors in the big Alberta sky. A very special part of me, the air I breathe, the heart of me, that big. Sky. That was uh, Alberta Sky by Mike Zabo, um, and uh, hopefully that song will be out soon. Release? Are you? Are you well, um, I don't know. We're uh, we have a whole bunch. We've got forty two demos laid down um, to to click tracks in the studio, so we're we're kind of. We've gone from the first song, which was the first 10 songs I ever wrote, so mm -hmm. it was easy to pick which ones were going to go on that one, to having all this selection now and trying to figure out. And I, I want to get that song out one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, so I, if it's not going to be on the next album, I'm going to have it out somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm even thinking of a two-song EP just or something. I don't yeah. even know what... Um, what the right way to do it is but well and i think you know for anybody that hasn't been to alberta yet you should come to alberta but maybe that song will give you some reasons as to why you should come to alberta because there is a lot of beauty here yeah and so i hope you uh, enjoy the song and uh thank you to mike for sharing it with us thanks Nick. nice to be able to do that yeah so can you uh talk to me a little bit about i know when i first saw you perform at the hub you played uh with katie yeah. your wife and um can you tell me a little bit about what it's like to play, uh, you know, music with her and, you know, um, um, how is that, you know, how that's impacted your, your journey musically so far? She's been massive in, in my musical journey because my, my previous relationship, um, musically there was no support. There was just no connection. There was no common ground there. Mm -hmm. And Katie and I met at an open mic. So right away there was common ground. 
and mm -hmm. it just grew from there. And her support of my music is just, I mean, the poor girl sits and listens to me play my guitar and sing songs every day for hours on end. And mm -hmm. she, and she still, you know, yes, gives absolutely. me the, gives me the support and the love. Wow. She's an amazing singer herself. So we've been able to, you know, uh, work together on stage and do some songs together. And we have a little, just a little short, you know, five or six song repertoire that we, we enjoy doing. And, mm -hmm. and then uh, she released an album and I got to watch that process a little bit. That was before I did mine, mm -hmm. you know, and I had no idea what recording was all about. I, I you know, mm -hmm. I'm still very naive about it, but um, so she's been huge, instrumental, and I don't think I would be anywhere near where I am now in terms of my music career mm -hmm. w without having her, um, her love and support and pushing me. So yeah, um, well. yeah, and those gigs at the hub, we love those gigs. Yeah, they were the best audience right there, and they'd sing with us, and uh, we look forward to that so much. And you know, it was a real. It was a real shame that that uh, the, the cuts came in. Yeah, so, it's one of those things that I think it's very. Um, what we don't realize maybe is you know, um, I guess everybody has challenges, but particularly in that case, when people might not be as. You know, they might not be able to tap their toes or clap along, but you can really tell. The impact of the music. Oh. Um, yeah. you know, just to be able to, and that's the thing too, is like <laughs> a lot lately I've been like, think it's maybe ridiculous, but like, I think about the fact that like this morning I brushed my teeth and I didn't have to have anybody to help me with that. Maybe that's a very simple <laughs> idea to think about, but like, um, the fact that I know some people that, you know, aren't that lucky and that I feel like I'm able to in a way, like if through my art or whatever we're doing, we can share a message and support those people. That's my goal as well. Um, so, and then I guess one thing um, I wanted to ask about, you know, we, um, and you're about to play some music for us as well, but um, I wanted to, if you could talk a little bit about your guitar, because I know, is that a, you, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, like, a, that's a special guitar. Yeah, yeah. it's a, uh, it's a Gilmore. It's made by somebody here locally, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, that's I guess that's a good way to talk about uh, your song that uh, you played for us, Alberta Sky. Can you tell me a little bit about you know? Yeah, I really liked I mean, listening to it for the first time here, hearing it, and you really go through you know, just I guess the I guess the beauty of Alberta and just like you know the the things that we um, in some ways I think maybe take it for granted. Um, you know the beauty that we have right in our backyard. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that's a that's a newer song that you wrote? I wrote it last year. Yeah, okay. yeah. I've I've been playing it out a little bit. Um, to, uh, you know, and uh, um, it's a song that I I want to get out because I think it, it'll connect with a lot of Albertans. It's yeah. uh, I hear that a lot where people talk about the Alberta sky. And, you know, and and it is a, a magnificent, beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Um, I think, um, boy, there were so many things in there. I think, I think yeah. appreciating what you have um, more and more and more and more is is becoming um, it's becoming important to me to to make sure that I'm doing that and being grateful for what I have because, as I said earlier, I've been blessed in my life, you know, without physical challenge or mental health challenge. I mean, I, I have addictions and issues that I've dealt with in my life. So you could say mental health challenges mm -hmm. have been there. My family has dealt with lots of different mental health challenges, you mm -hmm. know, throughout sisters, brothers, um, children. Um, you know, but you know, when I hear you say that, that, that uh, you're grateful because you're able to brush your teeth without assistance, it's those things that, you know, that we take for granted every day, people that don't have to, most of us, don't brush our teeth every day because we can and we get, you know, it's a pain in the butt and oh, I got to do that again. And, you know, it's so easy to get wrapped up in our own little worlds. Mm -hmm. And I did that a lot last year with this COVID thing and Facebook and should you get a vaccination? Shouldn't you? Who's right? Who's wrong? And I definitely had a, an opinion and started to, 
Well, I got on the soapbox there and started to let everybody know about it. And I had quite a bit of support, mm -hmm. which helped me think I was doing the right thing until I ran into the resistance that made me think about what I was saying from a different perspective. And I was like, you know what? Um, we all have opinions. Yeah. I don't necessarily need to be this person, mm -hmm. but I'm a songwriter. Mm -hmm. So I can ask the questions in my songs. And, I'm, and I think that's what I'm hoping my songs do is they they, 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 they they touch people in a way that makes them think about themselves. Not, not the, to tell them what to do or what not to do, mm -hmm. but just to be aware and just to be more open mm -hmm. to, the, to, the, to the fact that we're all, we're all messed up in some way. Yeah. We all deal with weight and challenges and gravity and, you know, um, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. for me, I just, it's your music's made a lasting impact on me. And I think if nice. when people uh, hear your music through this, through this podcast, uh, you know, be able to tune into your music, I think they'll really appreciate it. Um, so I, uh, I just want to say thank you for, for joining me today um, on the Off the Record podcast. Really amazing to be able to talk to you. And that's the key part of this podcast, I think, is to be able to, to, to talk about things that you might not know. Um, just listening to the album something you know um behind the scenes or you know off of stage you know uh there's obviously messages behind the song so that's the key aspect of this podcast and uh i want to thank everybody for for tuning in today yeah. and my guest mike zabo thank for, you Nick. for being yeah. able to to share yeah. his story with me yeah, i appreciate it's been it a privilege thanks for having me thank you yeah